Welcome everyone this afternoon to to Missions Beat. We're on our way to Greece. Be praying for Greece and the ministry that's going on there. Uh, clearly, uh, one of the great uh, opportunities here with so much of the New Testament uh, being being um, uh, spoken of and and Greece being part of it. So. Um, we and Thessalonica, one of the places we go into, they're calling it Thessaloniki there locally, uh, is an area that that is mentioned in the Bible quite often. So we're just excited to uh, um, to be able to go and do some great work for the gospel once again there. Uh, Jack, I'd like to. Um, uh, why don't you open in prayer for us and then do some introductions? Absolutely. Father God, we thank you for uh, this time today, Lord, that uh, to be able to gather here today to just pray for Greece and for our partners there, Lord, and all of the work that they're already doing in preparation for this team's arrival and for everything that they will continue to do for the team when, when we're there and uh, for those that we encounter after we leave, Lord. Father, I thank you for um, those who are able to join us today, Lord, and for those who will be watching the recording, Lord, and for their heart for uh, for Greece and for the nations around the world, Lord, to, pro to proclaim the gospel and the truth of salvation through Jesus Christ to uh, the those who may have never heard it before. Father, I just lift up to you the uh, various uh, opportunities that we have in Greece, Lord, um, that they would be fruitful and be blessed by you, Lord, and that each and everything that we arrange for this trip would be of you and not of our own desires, but out of your desires, Lord. Father, I ask all of these things in the great and mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Um, Chuck, actually, do you mind if you introduce yourself and your, your WMA role first? And go from <laughs> absolutely, there? absolutely. Um, or I, I don't mind. Uh, um, my name is Chuck Todd. I have the great honor and privilege of being uh, the uh, president of World Missions Alliance. My wife and I started this ministry uh, um, in 1999, uh, and we've been able to to go, we started in in Russia, and then actually the ministry uh, in 1999. We moved into China, uh, and then from there moved on into about 28 different countries. So uh, we're running over 30 countries, I believe now, uh, that we've been able to visit and seeing such incredible, incredible works of God that's being done all over the world. And one thing that uh, we've always felt that the Great Commission is more than just um, uh, pro uh, propagating the gospel, which is a very important part of it, setting the captives free, so to say. Uh, but there's another part that's often overlooked, and that's how much of an impact it makes on me or on you, on the people that are actually going on the trip. Your eyes will be opened in ways that um, uh, it's hard to even fathom, and you'll be given a new zeal and brought into a deeper relationship with God. I know most of you have been on missions trips, have already experienced that, and uh, uh, of course my experience is it doesn't stop with just the first one. Every time I go, I seem to be re uh, some uh, another portion of God is revealed, so I'm just, uh, uh, and our goal here is to bring revival to America by mobilizing the church overseas. So uh, uh, anyway, some of what we're doing, we started this, um, uh, as I mentioned, 1999. So we'll be celebrating 25 years this year. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Denise, if you would say hello and introduce yourself, that'd be great. Hey, everybody. Hello. I'm Denise Tickets. the missions coordinator for World Missions Alliance. Um, happy to see everybody on the call today. It's just to remind those of you who are on the call today, uh, you will have a chance to introduce yourself as well here in just a moment uh, so we can get to know a little bit more about you. But also there's quite a few who will be watching this uh, meeting is being recorded and they'll be watching it later. So uh, we just want to say uh, hello to everybody out there who's watching this as the recording um, and we're excited that uh, we have this opportunity to do a full length trip to Greece. We have been to Greece once before. It was a, a, a double trip. It was on the tail end of a trip to Albania. 
And so this is our very first time uh, doing a full 10-day trip. And so this mission trip, uh, the dates for the trip are June 24th through July 4th. And it's followed up immediately after by another mission trip to North Macedonia. And so that's a, a separate mission trip, but we do have uh, the option of combining the two and going on both trips. So uh, we can share about that here in just a little bit. Uh, I want to draw attention to the chat box for the call. I put the link to the trip information page for the 2024 Greece trip. Uh, that information page is where you're going to find all the information about the mission trip, um, and all the details about the um, cost of the trip and deadline dates and booking your flight, uh, travel insurance, uh, so on and so forth. Lots of detailed information. And if you'd like some uh, more information or if you'd like to be put on an interest list, or uh, even sign up for the trip, you can just uh, get in touch with us either through the website or by emailing me. I'll put my email address in the chat box as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Jamie, do you have a minute, too, to say hello? That'd be great. I do. Hi, everyone. My name is Jamie. I'm the Administrative Assistant with World Missions Alliance. I apologize. I'm not very clear because I'm a little under the weather, but I just wanted to hop on and say hi, and I'll be the one that you'll talk to if you have questions on payments or mission support or making a donation for any of the outreaches on these trips, as well as uh, flight information. So I'm happy to help anyone who has questions on that stuff as we get closer to the trip, and I'm uh, glad to see everyone who's here and I uh, hope everyone who watches it later uh, gets a lot of information that they need. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm the Assistant Missions Coordinator here at World Missions Alliance. And if you're new to WMA, you and I have most likely either talked over the phone or uh, via email. Uh, this part of my job is to help the uh, new people to WMA get plugged in and uh, get information on trips and get them through our, our application process, among other things. And um, I also get to lead some of the trips. And Denise referenced earlier that we went to Greece for a couple days last year and I was actually part of that team and uh, you guys are in for a treat with this full length trip to, uh, to Thessaloniki. You guys are going to absolutely love this and uh, for those of you who are watching the recording, if you're still praying about it, I highly encourage you to go ahead and join this team. Um, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, and with that being said, I want you guys to introduce yourselves as well. So I'd like to start out with Ruth. I am Ruth Jacobs, and I live in Rochester, New York, where it's very cold right now. Um, I'm excited about this trip. It's my second one with WMA. Um, I've really watched the Lord bring provision in for this trip faster than anything else I've done, and I've done several missions trips. I did try to recruit some people at our church. There's only one other person going besides myself at this point. That's wonderful. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Um, we have a phone number. It looks like 604-798-3143. That's me, Joni. I am Joni DeRider. I live on the west coast of Canada, um, where we are right at this moment in the middle of the snowstorm, which we never get. So everything is shut down. Everything. Um, this will be my second trip with Chuck and Helen, and I'm very excited. But um, I have to tell you, um, my sister-in-law will be coming along as well. And she is a person who takes um, a long time to make a decision. She's a very thoughtful, thoughtful person and very, um, very attuned to what the Lord wants. And a couple of days before I mentioned this trip to her, the Lord brought up a couple of um, nudges as she calls them. And then I brought up this trip to Greece, and she is so excited and just fully on board. So it's it's exciting. I, I can hardly wait. That's wonderful. I think it's so powerful when family comes together to serve the Lord together. I think there's a special unity and a special power in that. So, Joni, thank you so much. Um, we've got two ladies on an iPhone, it looks like.
Uh, looks like you guys are muted. Might need to unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Hi, my name is Luella, uh, and I have my friend here, church mate Pam. Uh, we're from Southern California. It's about, what, 60 degrees right now? Uh, it's cold for us. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's going to be my um, second mission trip. I went on a short mission trip to Argentina several years ago. So I'm uh, very excited uh, to go to Greece. Here's uh, my friend Pam. Oh, hi, my name is Pam and I'm a good friend of Luella. Uh, this will be my first trip. And this is, you know, uh, but uh, when Luella asked me to, if I would like to go, uh, I was so excited because uh, dream, uh, I have dreamt of, of going really a missionary, a short missionary trip. And when she said it's Greece, and I go, the more I got excited because that was a, a, a country that I really want to go to and see. So here I am. I haven't quite... Uh, uh i guess uh signed up with you i was gonna i plan on calling you mr coward today to yeah for my answer so i'll know uh what to expect you know uh contribution wise or whatever money money matters and uh but uh as i said yeah we will go together <laughs> loella and i from the church we belong to the same church here yeah so uh, that's all I can say. I am a retired nurse, so my my uh, my target is more on the medical uh, part of it, you know. But I'll go with the kids camp too, if if needed there. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate your flexibility. We like to to stretch people's comfort zones on these trips, so um, I appreciate your flexibility. <laughs> And uh, last but not least, looks like we have a Samsung phone, uh, the the couple there. Yeah, uh, it's Bill and Eloise Young. Hello. And, you know, we've got on mission trips before, whether they were work missions or medical missions. We're both registered nurses. Uh, but this is the first trip with uh, World um, World Mission Alliance. And we're looking forward to go to Greece. We, we've always had a burden for Europe. Because it's such a spiritually dark place, and uh, it's just great to be ministering where the Apostle Paul was, also. Absolutely. Thank you both, uh, Chuck. Would you take it away? Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's uh, incredible. I'm so excited to uh, to be able to meet all of you, and I hope that there's others uh, joining us via the recording later on. But you are you are right. It is an exciting time to minister in the places that are mentioned in the Bible, and uh, and it's astute to understand that simply because it's mentioned in the Bible does not mean that they're a Christian nation and there's not opportunities. It appears to be quite the opposite. Um, uh, Oftentimes, some type of re some type of religiosity takes hold and becomes part of their culture, but not part of their heart or their mind. And they and so here's an opportunity for us, and it's great because they they understand what they're supposed to believe. They understand that there there is a God. Um, but they're not following him. So we have a work cut out to give you an idea of what the schedule is proposed right now. Now, of course. As you know, uh, any any schedules we always do, there there um, there are uh, they're always tentative. If God shows up uh, and changes things, it's always for the better, and so we should be excited about that. But what we've scheduled right now is we're going to arrive on the 25th of June, and then on the 26th through the 29th, we're going to have the children's camp, and that's uh, it'll be it'll be a trait, you know, um, almost all. Almost everybody, and many of you know the exact numbers, but almost everybody that's, uh, that accepts Christ does so as a child. I think it's 90-something percent of the people that accept Christ, I think like almost 95 percent or something, 
near that number, uh, does so before the age of 25, and something like 92 or 90 percent before the age of 18. So these children's camps are the most important ministry that can be done really anywhere around the world. Um, uh, so here's where, where the people are open. So um, whether it be overseas or in your own home church, uh, never look at, at the children's ministry as being um, just uh, like a daycare, but understand here is the place where you're going to reap where a majority of the harvest is reaped. So uh, this is an exciting time for me, but it's the 26th to the 29th. On the 27th, uh, we will have the, the medical team will have the opportunity to go to um, a refugee uh, daycare center, basically, where um, uh, I guess it's just that. And it's downtown Thessalonica or Thessaloniki, um, which would be about 20 miles from the campsite. Uh, so so the medical team will have a, a day there. Uh, and then the uh, uh, and then the rest of the days from the 29th on will be working with the Roma and the Roma villages. Now, the Roma is um, the gypsies, uh, but over overseas, uh, the gypsies is a derogatory term. So they prefer the term Roma. And uh, uh, these are people that often are out of the systems. Um Many of the places, especially in the Balkan Peninsula, and I'm assuming Greece is the same way, uh, they have a a socialized health care where they're actually most likely they are should be the health care system should be available to them. But our experiences with the Roma community, they do not do the initial registration that needs to be done. Uh, so they, they need to have a, a card to get access to the medical system, and most do not have that. Uh, so these are people that's, that's left kind of outside the system, kind of fallen through the, the cracks of the social network there. So we'll, we will be visiting with them, ministering to them, uh, basically listening to their stories. A lot of the Roma uh, connection is listening to the stories because nobody – uh, will will do that. No one will treat them as humans. Uh, no one cares about their story. So listening to their story and then sharing the love of Christ with them and demonstrating the love of Christ is going to go a long way. Um, we also have a a opportunity to visit the uh, the archae- archaeological site to Philippi, also mentioned in the Bible. Uh, and it'll be about an hour and a half from the campsite there for the children's camp. We'll be spending most of our time there. This is the the ma- basic um, skeleton of the schedule that we have right now. Now, often on all of our trips, when we are fulfilling our scheduled mission, other opportunities will show up, especially when they see the team and the team talents. Uh, there's normally other opportunities that will present themselves that we will be taking taking advantage of. But um, it is a pretty full schedule, and um, I'm very, very excited here to be able to do this. This will be um, our first full trip into Greece. Jack has led a team in um, last year, and uh, so actually I haven't led a team into Greece yet. This will be my first my first team leading into Greece and um, I'm very, very excited about it. So anyway, that's what we have planned right now. If there's any questions. Well, that's true. I have a question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do we need a visa? No. Uh, U.S. U.S. citizens do not need a visa going into Greece. Canadian citizens uh, will need to verify that. I'm I I doubt that you do, but you know I'm things are changing on a daily basis. Pardon? I'm a U.S. citizen. My sister-in-law is a Canadian citizen, but I'm a U.S. citizen. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You well, you do not need a visa for sure. Uh, well, it would be wise for um, uh, your sister to um to verify i cannot imagine that that canadian citizen would need a visa but it needs to be verified so i'll check it out on this end that's fine perfect i have a question though um yes what are what are we staying in and where are we actually staying 
Um, well, the actual the actual uh, hotel and the site for staying has not yet been um, secured. Uh, we'll be working on that. There is a uh, uh, Jack. Did you go to the camp site when you were there? Yes, I did. It's actually quite impressive. And there they were when I was there building facilities for people to be able to stay. I know they were having some permit issues and approval issues with the government. So I'm not I don't know when those were expected to be finished, um, but they did have some facilities there. And honestly, the camp itself is is really impressive. It's not just this little like field in the woods. It's they've got basketball courts, soccer fields, paintball fields, zip lines. Like it's, it's really, really neat. So what, what I think what our plan is, what the initial plan will be is to stay in these uh, new facilities that they're, that they're completing. Um, uh, but I'll have to verify and we'll have it verified pretty quickly, whether those are expected to be ready for us to occupy them during that time or not. And if they're not, they'll be a, we'll stay in a hotel uh, nearby. And how many people are you expecting on the tour? What's the maximum number? Uh, we're expecting about 20 people. Is that, is that correct, Denise? I think she's got more of a control of that. Yeah, I would say an average of 20, but uh, this is a very popular mission trip. Um, we have a lot of people uh, expressed interest in it. And so I do want to make, I mean, at this point, we don't have a cap. Um, you know, if the team were to grow so large that we would have to cap it. But um, I'd say right now. Uh, it's safe to say we would have at least 20. Uh, the deadline to sign up for this trip is um, May 10th, May 10th. And so um, if you aren't already approved, uh, have an application approved and at least a $200 deposit down on this trip, that will secure your spot on the team. And then you have until the 10th of May to make your final payments and book your flights and make all those arrangements. But um, this team will fill up and at some point it may become so large that we do have to cap it. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind um, with, uh, with it being our first time into Greece for a full mission trip. Uh, the location uh, is, uh, you know, the timing as far as it being in the summer. So a lot of uh, reasons that it's a very popular trip and it will probably fill up pretty soon. I have another question. Yeah. Can I? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, it's just a basic question. Like people in Roma, you mentioned, because since this is my first time, I'm, I don't really know what I'm expecting, you know. Uh, I just want to find out. Uh, the, those people in Roma and in the kids' camp, do they speak English, or is there a church connection uh, interpreters that we will have when we when we are in those places? We will always have interpreters with us. Oh. Um, uh, so that's one thing. Now, Jack, you would tell you can explain better how much uh, of the people we speak we run into will be able to speak English. Okay. So. I had, in my experience, uh, about 50% would speak English when I was there. Uh, but it's always, like Chuck said, we always have interpreters on all of our trips. So there's no need to learn Greek in the next six months. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. And if you can do that, that would be very impressive. I would, I would be wow. truly impressed but uh, uh we will always have interpreters and especially uh the medical teams would definitely need interpreters uh that that are a little bit skilled in um in medical terminologies clearly uh uh and anytime we're ministering the gospel will be we'll have interpreters there uh but what's nice if 50 percent of the people can speak english that means oh, yeah. uh you it it multiplies our one on one time of who you can who you can um minister to and be friends so that's always a good thing and and they can be impromptu on a on the informal encounters so okay thank you escaristo no problem <laughs> pardon i said escaristo that's uh thank you in greece <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, there you go. We have an interpreter right there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, Josh, I have a question. So, what about um, the temperature and the, the, you know, like how warm does it get there in the summer? And I guess what to wear, what to really bring to wear. Very good. Jack, do you, when did you go? Um, did actually, you go, in, go uh, ahead, Ruth, Denise, I'm sorry. We, we will have, um, we'll have an official team meeting a little bit closer to that deadline date uh, around the middle of May. And so during the team meeting, uh, we're going to go over all the logistics, all the uh, airport pickup instructions, packing lists, what to wear, what to bring. Um, so all of that kind of comes a little bit later as far as uh, the details of the trip. Uh, the details that you need for now are on that trip information page. But then once uh, we've officially uh, got a team established and uh, that final payment deadline has passed, We'll have a team meeting, so it'll be very similar to this. You'll get an invite, and we'll be able to discuss a lot of those details. Um, but Chuck did mention uh, that this is a medical mission trip, and so I wanted to uh, have Jack just take a minute to explain for any medical professionals that are planning to join um, what that might look like in Greece um, for, for them. Yeah, perfect. So as far as um, the conversations that I had when I was there last year, because of what we can do legally there. Our medical clinics will be extremely, extremely simple. It will be a lot of education, a lot of vitamins distributed. Uh, we may have opportunities to do medical seminars on specific topics. Um, like I know when we've done this in other countries where we've had similar setups, we've done seminars on depress depression, digestive health, and, and things like that. Like, what does the Bible say on depression? What does the Bible say on this health-related issue or things like that? So we can use those still as, as our part of our primary purpose to to share the gospel and expand the kingdom and share Christianity. Um, but like I said, the, the medical clinic portion will most likely be very simple with, you know, basic triage, a lot of education, basic vitamins being distributed because of what we're legally allowed to do there. Do we, can we bring along any, you know, things for the children's camp or medical supplies? Should we maybe be buying those now and stocking them up? Absolutely. That's a great idea. And like when Denise was talking about with the team meeting, we'll um, talk about that during the meeting where we will assign like certain vitamins for people to bring. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about things for the children's camp? Like, can we bring coloring books and crayons and that sort of thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are always, always welcome. Okay. Good. Yeah, Jack, when you said about like triage, should we bring like, um, like, you know, our blood pressure cups and things like that? Or are you going to be doing Absolutely. blood pressure? All Absolutely. That. Bring your bring the stethoscope, bring the blood pressure cups, the uh, oxygen monitors, anything like this that that small fits in your suitcase. Um, because, of, yes, you'll need those uh, for the, especially for the triage area. Um, uh for sure, bring those. Um, we have, but as Jack mentioned, now in Albania we did the medical teams, and uh, we had one team that the government was pretty closely monitoring. So we had to come down to um, just education, and it ended up being one of the more productive medical teams we've been on. And what we discovered later was that uh, there. Their uh, socialized system, the doctors don't even touch them uh, and they don't explain anything. So they the procedures, basically, they come in, they explain their symptoms and then the doctor prescribes them a treatment plan and just says, here, take this and tells them how to take the medicines they give them. And that's it. They don't tell them what it's for, what it's doing, how to do wow. additional steps to to help their and especially if they have chronic issues, uh, they have no idea what they can personally do with adjustments of diet or adjustments of lifestyle to affect their uh, to better their chronic conditions. So so. Um, 
uh, education side is is an overlooked area that is truly going to probably have the greatest long term benefit of anything we can do. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. So I would say this, even if we are have complete freedom to do all the medical we can do, uh, I, I, I think it would be very good if we can slip in some education with that. So okay. as far as any other questions, goes, um, do we know how many children and what their age ranges are? I don't know that yet. Uh, uh, Jack, would, Jack, were they doing the uh, kids clinic when you were there or the kids uh, camps when you were there? So they didn't have a camp when I was there, but they offer camps for uh, like everywhere between elementary to high school age, what we would consider elementary to high school age. So it could be very, very diverse. Mm-hmm. As Denise said, when we have the actual team meeting, these details we will have and uh, and be able to give you exact ages, uh, expected amount of of uh, kids that will be coming. Uh, hopefully we'll have um, uh, some type of rough estimates of how many of each of the age groups that will be coming there. So we should have most of this information um, uh, when we have the actual team meeting. So, But uh, as far as collecting things for the kids, I think it's a good idea to start that even now. Uh, and, and vitamins, uh, there may be specific uh, nutrients and and other things that we can that we will we will announce during the team meeting, but the basic uh, multivitamins are always a good thing. So, okay. I have a question. And children's vitamins. Yes. Um, you mentioned it's a refugee camp. Where are the refugees coming from? Did you visit the camp? I don't even have that information there. I just have a a refugee camp, so I don't even I didn't even ask that question. No, I didn't. Um, I was able to, when I was there. I was able to go to the actual campsite where the kids' camp will take place, and I went to a Roma village, but I I wasn't able to visit the refugee camp. No, I I don't have an answer to that question. My guess would be Ukrainian refugees and uh, Syrian refugees would be two. Uh, because that's the two big refugee crises we have um, in the areas, and all of them are trying to get into Europe uh, in some way. So getting into Greece would be a coup for them. Uh, so that is definitely a a target for them is is Greece. So um, and even uh, in the past, uh, there were many refugees trying to get into. Um, uh, from Iran, of all places, uh, that was also coming in. So that was interesting. Okay, any any uh, any other questions? Not that we have answers for all your questions, but uh, but we will during our team meeting. Um, but is there any other questions that you may have before we go to prayer? The uh, camp. Um, now that is that outside the city or. The, the children's camp? Yes, it, it is outside the city. It would be about 20 miles from what I understand from Thessalonica. Is that is that about correct, Jack? It's in the suburbs, basically. It's in the burbs. Mm-hmm. Is Helen accompanying you, us on this trip, Chuck? Uh, that's the intention right now. That could change, but that's uh, that's what we're looking at. Good. How can you give the group here some prayer points before we start prayer? Just things that uh, particularly are needed for Greece and the partners there and the ministry, the trip and everything. Do you say for me or for Jack? For you. Okay. Okay, well, Jack Jack can add in because he has a, a more okay. of a um, intimate experience there with the actual people he's ministering to. But in general, the prayer points is definitely um, uh, a revelation of who God is uh, beyond just a, a cultural a cultural God. So we want to do that. Now, with ministry, obviously, and especially in these in countries like this, my experience has been... 
churches that are doing outreach here uh, are running into roadblocks. Uh, and our biggest problem of all the countries we go to, whether it be the post-Soviet Union uh, uh, in Russia in, in, and even as far as that goes in Iraq, our, our issues were not with the Muslims, with how you would expect. Our issues were with the more orthodox uh, Christians that were there uh, trying to defend the orthodoxy, um, which in my mind, we're all worshiping God. But in their mind, it's it's the priority is culture, and they look at uh, sometimes our simple gospel message as an attack on their culture. So, uh, uh, so one to me, one of the biggest prayer points is that that the people there will have an open heart to receive the gospel and to encourage uh, the workers that are there, the ministries that are there on day and night, twenty four seven that God will continue to encourage them and give them um, uh, new ideas to, to minister in effective ways. Jack, did you have anything to add to that? No, that's exactly what I was going to say is just open hearts um, and open eyes and ears for uh, those that the Orthodox people there, because it's like Chuck said, it's part of such a big part of their cultural identity. Like to be Greek is to be Orthodox. Um, it's it's a huge portion of who they are. And then, uh, like he also said, just encouragement and uh, strength and endurance for the the local uh, evangelical church. That would be the, the two big ones. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. If, um, is there, if, if there's no more questions, I think uh, we'll go to prayer right now. And uh, when we're praying, I'm going to ask that we mute our mic when we're not praying. And uh, that requires something else. I'm going to tell you mainly so that I can remember to unmute the mic when you actually start to pray so the rest of us can join in. For some reason... I always explain that to others, and I myself don't follow it. So, um, uh, if you see my mouth moving and I'm not, you're not hearing anything. Kind of just remind me also to unmute my mic. Um, but the rest of us, uh, let's go ahead and and we can do that. Sometimes we have background noises that interfere with the others. Um, so, um, uh, we can do that. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, Denise, why don't, I, why don't you start us off in prayer? I will finish, but each one of us can pray as the Spirit leads, and after some time, uh, I'll go ahead and finish this up. So, uh, Denise, would you start us off? Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this day, Lord, for this opportunity to come together. Uh, your word says when two or three are gathered together, uh, they can ask for anything in your name, according to your will, and it'll be done. We just thank you, Father, right now. We lift up these requests to you, Lord, uh, for the country of Greece, for the mission trip we have planned there in June, for all the team members going, for our partners there, for the people that will be ministered to, Lord. And we just pray a, a special uh, anointing uh, over each person that's going to be part of this mission, Lord. We thank you, Father, for... Uh, just opening up all the doors of opportunity to minister in uh, the children's camp and the Roma village in, uh, in the city, outside the city, in refugee camps, and anywhere else you would have us, Lord. We just thank you, Father, that every opportunity will be uh, met with uh, readiness to uh, share your love and share the gospel with those in Greece. Uh, we thank you, Father, that um, the revelation knowledge of uh, who you are and what you've done for those people in Greece uh, through your son, Jesus, Lord, will be received in the hearts of the people that hear the gospel. We thank you, Father, that the word uh, will go forth. It will accomplish that which it was sent to do, and it will not return to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father, that the seed that's planted in the hearts and lives of those in Greece will um, grow deep and grow deep roots and uh, grow and spring up and produce great fruit. And we thank you, Father, for um, the tremendous testimony and the uh, tremendous long-lasting effect that 
this uh, short 10 days uh, can make in that area and in that country. And we just thank you, Father, for all of that in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray a blessing to Jack, to Jamie, for Denise, for Chuck and for Helen as they prepare for this trip, Lord. Give them what they need so that the plans will be what you have desired, where you want us to go, the schedule you want us to maintain. I thank you, Lord, for WMA, for the 25 years that they have have done this work. You are a great God, and we are grateful now that you have chosen us to go into the country where Paul was before us. We pray that you will smooth out all of us, all the finances that need to be arranged, that you will smooth out plane reservations and then the actual travel, Lord, that it'll all go well. In your name we pray. Amen. Father, we just pray for the people there in, in Thessaloniki and that their eyes would be opened, Lord, and that their hearts would be softened toward who you really are and toward um, becoming one of your people and, and developing a relationship with you, Lord, that, that just plain religion would be able to be put aside, that they would see the true meaning of of knowing who you are, Jesus. We pray for the children, Lord, as they um, come into the camp and as we go to minister to them, that your, your kingdom would just come into their lives and their lives would never be the same, Lord, that, that they would be changed forever because we took the time to be there and minister to them, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, my name is Pearl. I want to give you the thanks. I want to glorify your name for bringing us into a, a brand new year. Father, we thank you for the call of God upon our lives. Father, it's a wonderful thing to walk with you. Lord God of hosts, I pray for this uh, ministry. I thank you for the Arrowhead and the wife, thank you for the members of this team. Thank you for the next mission trip. Lord, I pray and I ask that you will give us a mouth and a wisdom to speak, to preach your word. And I ask that souls will be won into the kingdom. Daddy, I ask that you open the door, open the door of faith. For as many as will hear the sound of our voice, they will give their lives to Christ in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that signs and wonders will accompany us as we do your work. Let your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. As for the resources, oh God, Father, your name is provision. Daddy, you will provide. Daddy, I thank you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Dear God, I want to thank you for World Mission Alliance and for the work they do. And I want to pray for this mission trip, Lord, that you would just grant safety and provision for all the details that um, you would allow us to have the, the right time and the right words to speak for you, that we can reach these people, especially the children, uh, that we would see their lives change, many saved. And that these people would grow, Lord, and they would have uh, influence in the sphere of people and in their lives. And we would see your word spread and it would be for your glory. Thank you that we can be a part of it. And we just ask you to give us the uh, strength and wisdom as we go forth to be able to accomplish your will. And we ask this to be done for your glory and in your name. Amen.
Father God, we come and we worship you, Lord, in, in all things. Lord, I pray for each and every member of this team that's taken their time, Lord, to to come and hear what you are doing around the world, Lord, and, and agreeing with us and joining together to be one spirit, praying to you, that we're praying in one accord, Lord. And I, I pray for the team that is in Greece right now, Lord, that you will give them an open heaven that they haven't seen before, Lord. You will give them an opportunity they haven't seen before, Lord. I pray you send your ministering angels out right now, Lord, to start preparing the way, Lord, to start opening hearts, to start softening hearts, Lord, so that the people will be receptive to your truth, to your love, to your grace, to your peace that they may have never seen before. Lord, I pray for each and every person that travels on this team to Greece, Lord, that you'll put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. You will expand their 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 support group, their partners, Lord, that, that finances will come in quicker than they've ever ever known before, Lord. That them uh and with each person that that donates, Lord, there will be people that are praying diligently for the protection, for the opportunity, for the success of of the ministry you've called them to do. Lord, I pray for that each person going, Lord, that you'll reveal yourself afresh and anew to each one, Lord, that you'll reveal new new portions of you that before had been had been hidden, Lord, and that they will each each one of us that is going will be brought to a new level and instilled a new zeal for for you and love for you, Lord. And Lord that that purpose individual purpose will be revealed. And Lord, I pray uh, uh, in our wake, uh, revival will take place in, in Greece and Thessalonica, Lord, that truly there will be a change. And truly people will understand not just about you, but truly become one with you, Lord. And Lord, in all of these things, we give you praise, glory, and honor in your mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Is there any other questions or comments? Now, just FYI, I think everybody's muted. So if anybody's saying anything, uh, you may need to unmute. Well, praise God. I'm so excited to be able to join with you today and uh, uh, looking forward to being with you in, in Greece or anywhere else. As far as that goes, we will have our our annual conference coming up uh, in April. I do pray that all of you are keep that also in prayer. And I would be very honored if all, if you can make it to the conference and be a great opportunity also for you to meet some of the others that travel on these trips. We are just one big family. Uh, and so, uh, I uh, would love to, to have you come be part of that also. Um, all right. Any, any other comments? Looking for the next Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. And, uh, the next one is, when's our next, our next meeting, Denise, do you have that schedule? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we will meet next. Looks like February 7th and then the 21st. So it's always at 10 a.m. Central Time on the first Wednesday of the month and then at 2 p.m. Central Time on the third Wednesday of every month. And we do have that new Missions Beat page. So you can access the recording to this video as well as the previously recorded mission speeds, all on the mission speed page uh, on our website under the Get Involved tab. You can just uh, click on Mission Speed and it'll take you to that page and it'll list all of the upcoming meetings uh, for the next month and as well as uh, links to the recorded meetings that we've already had. Hey, hey, Denise, is the next meeting on the 7th or the 1st? Because February 1st is the first Wednesday of the month. February 1st and Thursday. It's a Thursday. It's a Thursday? Yes, February 1st okay. and Thursday. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. 
perfect. So, Good. Uh, February 7th at 10 a.m. and then February 21st at 2 p.m. All right. We're looking forward to seeing all of you there, and uh, I hope that the rest of today is a very good and productive day for you. I hope everybody will stay warm. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye.